Good morning. Welcome here, everybody, to Sterling Mennonite Fellowship. It is so great to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as you know, it is not only Thanksgiving today, we are also having a baptism. And so we are excited that you have joined us for this celebration uh, this Sunday. We also know that we're all coming in here with different things. Our weeks have been different. Uh, our our uh, months, our whole pandemic has been different. We have seen some of you recently, some of you we haven't seen for a long time. So wherever you are coming from, we want to welcome you here in this space. And we're going to start off by singing a song together. Now, you'll notice we don't have any pews because of, uh, pews. we don't have any hymnals in the pews because of COVID, but all the words to the songs we are singing are going to be up on the screen. So I'm going to invite us all to uh, join together, stand if you are able, and we will invite you to sing together for the beauty of the earth. And it'll be right there. With it. <laughs> You're going to have to go back a bit there. Just a few more. There we go. All right. Let's sing together for the beauty of the earth. Welcome everybody, it is such a delight to have you all here. Um, it is a special Sunday, it's Thanksgiving as already mentioned, and also uh, baptism as we celebrate with Rebecca uh, as she takes that step of commitment. We are so glad you have joined us. We are glad for the people on Zoom who have joined us. And you know, we haven't done this for a while, but I think we should greet each other way back in another lifetime. We shook hands. 
Um, we can't do that anymore. So just stand up for a moment, turn around and either bow or wave or something and you people on Zoom, maybe you can wave too. Each morning, uh, each Sunday morning, we light the peace lamp to remind us of the presence of Christ who is with us at all times. I will do that now, and those of you who are Zoom on Zoom can light your candles. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I'd like to take just a moment to look at the bulletin and the various things that need highlighting. Um, we're excited that the Rooted Bible Study is starting up again this week on Wednesday. To begin with, it's going to be on Zoom so that everybody can be included. And then you folks who are participants can carry on the conversation to find out uh, when you can meet in person or how that can be done. We have another program that Kennedy is giving some leadership to. It's called Prayer Buddies, and they want to um, pair off each Sunday school child with an adult. And we're opening it up. First, we thought just older seniors. Well, there aren't that many. So we need more people age 55 and up to uh, sign up with Kennedy. It's just a one year um program that we're we're starting up and it's basically you pray for each other and you greet each other when you see each other uh, at church or various other places so uh talk to kennedy if you're interested otherwise maybe you'll be getting a phone call <laughs> uh last call for the church directory update i think i have most changes of addresses or uh, new people that should be added um, just saying that when these are ready, I'm going to put them in your church mailboxes and you can pick them up there. And that way I know who's got one and who doesn't, and you will get it by mail if you can't pick it up here. I will let you read the rest of the announcements. Um, just a note about this week at a glance, I, I put the various committee meetings in there so that you know what's happening in the church. And also if you have a concern or anything that you want either the pastoral care team or, or someone else, someone on council to know about, uh, that's your time to pick up the phone and uh, make sure that they hear whatever your concern is. As we prepare our hearts for worship now, I invite you to pray with me. God, source of all hope and holiness, we gather today to be church. Bless each one of us here and those who are unable to be here, that we may choose justice by your spirit. We may draw kindness from the well of your mercy and that we may walk humbly in your path. We pray in the name of Jesus, our savior, amen. We want to sing another song together that fits into the theme of baptism, of community, and of service. We're going to sing, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? Um, and uh, invite us all again, if you're able to join us in standing, and let's sing this together.
Okay, now it's time for the children's time. So if there's any kids that want to come to the front, it'd be great to see you up here. Wow, thanks for coming. It's great to see you all, you guys. Does anyone know what this is? Yarn? String? What is what do you think? It is white string, you're right. If we can use white string or yarn to tie things together and connect things. Yep. You can, you, you can use it to fix scarves, you're right. And I made this afghan when I lots of time during COVID when, when I couldn't do anything, but I made this afghan and it's all connected. Oh, thank you, Olivia. It's all connected together. So that's what string can do, it can connect things. And the connectedness reminds us, reminds me of the church. We are all connected to each other. And we all come from we all come to learn more about God and to worship God and be with each other. But in the pandemic, I felt a, like I was away from you guys. I only saw you on the screens. It seemed and I couldn't see you each Sunday. And when I saw you, but when I saw you on the computer screens, it was so exciting to see how much you've grown and the different things you could do. And some of you were born while we were watching on Zoom. <laughs> well, not exactly like that, <laughs> but we, we looked and all of a sudden there were new kids on the, in families and it was wonderful. We we're all connected and we've all been through a pandemic together. And during the pandemic, we couldn't see you in, in person, but we were connected and we just, couldn't, we were connected, but we couldn't be together in person. But we were connected by love. We were connected by love and we were and love for God and love for each other. And that is kind of hard to understand, but it's like a book I read. We're all connected by invisible yarn. We couldn't see it, but we could feel we can feel connected in our hearts. And this invisible yarn holds us together. It doesn't matter how far apart we are, we are all connected and we can feel love for each other. And our love for each other travels along the invisible yarn. And this invisible yarn keeps us connected. But it is Jesus who brings us together. Does anyone know what this is? Glue. Glue. Jesus is like the glue that holds us all together. When I make something, I want it to stick and I want to make sure it doesn't move. Then I use really strong glue because you guys have probably used um, this one, but sometimes I want it to stick and then I need to use stronger glue, like Gorilla Glue. Maybe you could use a hot glue gun too, you're right. The stronger the glue I use, the better it will hold together. And Jesus is like the strongest glue we could ever use. And Jesus is like the strong glue that we can use to hold us together. Even though we come from different families, we are different ages, we like different things, go to different schools, come from different backgrounds and different relatives, come from different countries or cultures. Some of these things may pull up pull us apart, but Jesus, like this strong, strong glue, Jesus is like strong glue, it is when we're connected to Jesus, Jesus' strength and the glue that holds us together, we can be strong in our unity. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for connecting us all together with love. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the glue that holds us all together. And thank you that you love all of us. In your name, amen.
You can go back to your family. Thank you. morning. This morning's scripture reading comes from Romans 12 verses 9 to 18. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. The word of the Lord. I often make the mistake when we come to Baptism Sunday that I forget that uh, other people have things to say that might be more important than what I have to say. And I sometimes go on a little bit too long. So I'm doing my best today to keep this sermon short. Or maybe we can call it more of a reflection or even better, an introduction into where we're going as a church for the next seven weeks. I invite you to pause with me for a word of God, I thank you for this time that we have here together, and I pray that you would speak through your word to us. God, I pray that you would guide our thoughts and that you would guide my words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Moses, and I've been pastoring here in this community for about six years. I've been part of the church for about 10 years. Before that, I lived in Toronto. That's where my family is from. That's where I grew up most of my life. And my wife and our baby and I, we had the great joy of going to Toronto over the last three weeks. So if you have been here the last two Sundays, we were not here. We were enjoying our time with family and friends in Toronto. It was a wonderful trip. We took the drive through Canada, through, over Lake Superior and down into Ontario. It was a long drive. Uh, it was tiring, <laughs> but it was all good. We had a lot of time with family and even some friends as well. And I'm just so grateful, so thankful that half of my family who had never met our baby yet since uh, she was born, were finally able to meet her, to hug her uh, and to see each other in person. Thank you for your prayers for us as we were away. Uh, we're very thankful to have gone and also very thankful to be back. It was wonderful reconnecting with family and I don't know if you've had this experience when you've been apart from family for a long time and then again you're in the same space and it's like no time has really passed, right? You just connect again because you're bonded at such a deep level. That definitely was the case for us. But I don't know if you've had this other experience where you have connected with certain people once again after this long pandemic and it's felt a little bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you didn't quite know what to say or how to act and that those muscles, those social muscles that we've been used to exercising during this pandemic have kind of laid dormant, right? We, we, we haven't been exercising those muscles in the same way and, and now that we're able to see people again, sometimes it just doesn't feel the same. <laughs> so even in Toronto, we were together with some family or, or some friends where you know you greet each other at first and you talk a little bit and then all of a sudden 
you don't know what to say. <laughs> and there's this awkward silence until somebody brings up the next topic. But I know that with time, that too will change. But I think in some ways, it's the same for us as a church, right? We've been used to doing church in a certain way. And all of a sudden the pandemic hits and now we have to meet online. We have to do phone calls, we have to do Zoom. We can't be in the same space together. When we are, we have to wear masks and we can't hug and we can't shake hands. And now all of a sudden we're starting to be back in person again. And we're hoping and praying that things continue to move in the right direction with this pandemic, that, that soon we can do things that feel more normal. And, and yet, to some of us, it might feel like we quite don't know how to get into that again, how to be community again, how to be uh, sharing our lives again. And so we as a worship committee were kind of thinking about where we wanted to go. And if you've been with us for the last four weeks, we've been talking about the pandemic. We've been, we've been creating space in the church to name our losses, to celebrate the things we've missed, to talk about the future of the church. And now for a bit of time, we want to focus on what it means for us to actually be a community. What are these muscles that we need to exercise again as we start to share space and share life with each other? So today we're starting this new series that is all focused on one Greek word, okay? And that Greek word is aleilon, aleilon. That Greek word appears a hundred times in the New Testament in 94 different verses. There's a few verses where it's in there twice. But this Greek word, aleilon, uh, also appears 47 times where it gives instruction to the followers of Jesus. Paul wrote about this word or wrote this word 60% uh, of the time. 60% of those instructions were written by Paul. Now you may be wondering, well, what is aleilon? Well, what does that mean? Aleilon is a Greek word that means one another. And maybe some of these commands, some of these verses are popping into your head. These one another commands, love one another, forgive one another, bear one another's burdens, speak truth to one another, pray for one another, encourage one another. There are 47 of these one another commands in the New Testament intended for the church, intended for us. One third of those one another commands are about unity the church getting along. One third of those commands are about Christians loving one another. About 15% of those commands are about humility. And then the rest are a mix of all kinds of different instruction. Well, we've got seven weeks ahead of us leading up to Advent, and we have selected seven of these one another commands for us to look at. Seven commands that speak about what it means for us to be the church, to live in community together once again. Today, just for a short amount of time, I want to focus on Romans chapter 12. Because it's in Romans chapter 12, verse 10, we find one of these commands. This chapter, these verses, I hope may be familiar to you. If you remember, I think it was three years ago, we celebrated our 60th anniversary as Sterling Mennonite Fellowship. And the deacons at that time selected Romans chapter 12 as our guiding passage. So during that time, we read that passage a lot. We focused on it quite a bit. But today we're just going to focus on one verse. Focus on verse 10 that speaks about devotion to one another. I want to read just a little bit before that, though, starting at verse 9. Paul writes in Romans, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need and practice hospitality. 
Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. That's just one short snippet of Romans chapter 12. But again, in verse 10, it focuses on devotion. And that's what I'd like to focus on today. Be devoted to one another in love. I don't know if the word devotion is a word that we use often in our vocabulary. I think the word devotion and love fit well together. When I think of devotion, I also think of commitment, fidelity, unity, trust, service. Devotion, even though it might not be a word we, we use all the time, we, we see it played out in our lives. Devotion, in one sense, is a manifestation of love in community or in relationships. It's something that we all experience. It's something that we, at times, all long for, is feeling devoted to something or someone or a group and, and having other people be devoted to you. Again, I think one of the ways to put it maybe is that devotion is a manifestation of love. It, it speaks of one's commitment to a person or, or to a group of people. We see this manifestation, of course, in, in the Bible, all throughout the Bible, when it comes to God's devotion to creation. Not only humanity, but all of creation. But we see specifically God's commitment to humans in the way that God has made covenants way back, starting even before Abraham, but most, uh, I guess, significantly to us with Abraham and Sarah, the people of Israel, and then of course through Jesus. God's commitment to us has always been there. That God has sought for our flourishing, for goodness within humanity. So much so that God has decided to give of himself for us. So much so that God decided to come down in human form so that we might find our way to God. God's devotion to us is seen all throughout the pages of Scripture. The Psalms speak of God's faithfulness even when we are not faithful. God is still devoted to us. And we even have that hope that from now till the end of time, God will stay devoted to us. And that in the end, when Jesus returns to make all things right, God will gather all of God's people into the kingdom of God. We see that devotion in God because devotion is a manifestation of God's love for us. We also see that devotion in, in our families and in our friend groups as well. There's many stories in scripture, but we can even think of our own lives. Maybe it's because of your relatedness, because of the blood that you have, that you feel devoted to a certain group of people. Maybe it's because of the choice you made that you feel devoted to a certain group of people. Maybe it's because you just like them that you're devoted to them. But that devotion, that commitment is there even if you are far apart, if you move away, even when things change in your life, even when your views don't always align and you don't always get along, you still see yourself as devoted to one another. And we also see the manifestation of love and devotion in the church. In the same way that we, you know, talk about family, we talk about the church as a family. We talk about the church as a body, united, even though we are different. We, as a church, are called to be devoted to one another, to be committed to one another, to be at unity with one another, to serve and to love one another. Paul has to remind the church often, and we need this reminder too. Like I said before, 30% of these one another commands are, are about unity, 
Because as we know, it is often hard for the church to get along. It's often hard for us to remember that we are united and that we are one. But this devotion to one another, if it is a manifestation of love, and if we are called to love one another, and if that is supposed to be the symbol by which the world knows us, then by being devoted to one another, people will also see that love and be drawn into the family of the church. The difference, of course, in the church is that you now are sitting beside people you may know well or you may not. You might hang out with them outside of Sunday morning or you may not. You may like them or you may not. The church is this body that brings together people from all walks of life. And as Michelle was emphasizing before, is united in the person of Jesus Christ. In the life, death, resurrection, and second coming of our Savior. That is what unites us. And that is why we can be devoted to one another because what Christ has done in unifying his body. We are one body, although we are many parts. And, and maybe we forgot that a little bit with the pandemic because we were apart so much and we only saw each other on Zoom. And when we got tired of seeing each other, we just turn off the microphone or turn off the video or just signed out. And we were able to keep much more distance from one another. But I think we need that reminder that to be part of the church is to be devoted to one another, to be committed to journey in life together. I don't know if you know this, it, it was announced a number of weeks ago, I think, um, that Zach, Hebert, and Marina got married yesterday. We were able to be at the wedding to celebrate with them. But every time we're at a wedding, right, we get reminded of this two people making this decision to be unified and to become one flesh. That doesn't just happen in an instant. You know, they make that decision on the wedding day, but that is a lifelong commitment and takes lifelong working out to continue to be devoted to each other. Well, we too, the church, not only here, but the church global is one body. And that doesn't just mean one Sunday we make a commitment to join the church or to be baptized. It means it's a lifelong commitment and working out of devotion and love within the community. It's easy for someone like Paul to just say, be devoted to one another in love. But it is our task now to live out that devotion to one another. We see, we're going to see today, an example of this. An example that has been... Um, has been present in the church since the beginning of the church. And that is in baptism, where a person commits themselves to following after Jesus and says, yes, they want to be part of the church. And the church also says to this person, yes, we see that you are beloved and a child of God, and we commit to journeying together with you. But what we're going to see in baptism is a small example of what it means to be devoted to one another, to accept someone because of their faith in Jesus Christ, to accept them in this community, and to agree that we're going to journey on together, that we're in this together. So we want to transition now, Rebecca, <laughs> to the big moment of the day, to your baptism, where the spotlight will be on you. <laughs> But we are so excited that we can witness this special day. And that for many years, we have seen how you have grown as a person and have grown in your faith in Jesus Christ and your commitment to the church. And now we get to celebrate that as Rebecca takes the plunge. I mean, we're not plunging, but uh, you know, we pour, but it's, you get the idea. Now, some of you have come especially for this occasion and that is wonderful. Uh, for others as well, for all of us, this is a time of celebration. So we invite you just to, to be free, to, to laugh, to, to clap, all those things as we celebrate the commitment that Rebecca is making today.
Just a little bit of background. I, I don't know if you know this, but we did faith exploration classes during COVID, mostly on Zoom, which was a bit of a challenge. It wasn't as nice as being in person. But after we finished, we just kind of had to wait until we were finally able to do baptisms. And so it's so exciting that now we can do that. Rebecca was part of those classes. Uh, and uh, many of you have known Rebecca for some time. But of course, we are going to hear from Rebecca, her own story of faith, and why she is choosing to devote herself to Christ and to devote herself to the church. If you're unfamiliar with baptism, uh, baptism is a step that Christians are called to take in following after Jesus. It's a public proclamation of our faith in Jesus Christ. When we participate in baptism, we participate in Jesus' dying, being buried, and raising again. A believer is joined to a community, a Christian community, the body of Christ. Someone who is baptized is, is born anew of water and of spirit, and that baptism is a symbol of what happens within. When we are baptized, we, we are clothed with new garments, signifying the new creation. We die to the ways of sin and are raised to new life in our ongoing union with Christ. Baptism itself follows repentance and signifies the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, and baptism also witnesses to the transforming power of the Holy Spirit in a person's life. All these things are present when we do baptism. And that's why this is such a celebration. And so as we prepare to hear from Rebecca, I invite us to pause for a word of prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks that in the beginning, your spirit moved upon the face of the waters and you said, let there be light. We give you thanks that you led your people through the waters and into the freedom of the promised land. We give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who was baptized in the river Jordan. We thank you that he passed through the deep waters of death on the cross and was raised to life in Christ. Send us your Holy Spirit that this baptism may manifest for Rebecca her union with Christ in his death and resurrection, and that as Christ was raised from death through the glory of the Father, she also might live a new life. Send your Holy Spirit anew upon us that we may be reminded of our fellowship in the body of Christ and our devotion to one another, and that we may grow in Christ's love. Hear us, our God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As Rebecca prepares to come up to share her testimony, we're going to share or sing together just two verses of Take My Life and Let It Be. Uh, we'll sing those two verses as Rebecca prepares to come up, and I'll just invite you to stay sitting for this one. Let's sing together. <laughs> Sterling for two or three years. The first time I stepped into Sterling was for the VBS program, and from that day I felt welcomed into an amazing community of growth, discipleship, and fellowship. I grew up in a Christian Mennonite home, but it wasn't until grade five that I questioned my faith. I had a close friend die of cancer, and my grandma insisted that her family should not attend church or have a relationship with God. 
As a young 10 year old, this left me with so many questions, like why would someone be so against God and how could someone be so opposed to my beliefs? I was so confused and felt lost with so many questions. A year and a half after she passed, I came to Sterling and realized that, walking, that a large part of walking with Christ was being in fellowship with others. And I found this through attending Sterling and Sterling Youth, youth Group. I also found fellowship through PBS at Sterling. I found that I grew a lot spiritually while doing PBS with Sterling. I especially found real community through the Cross Lake PBS, worshiping, learning, and teaching others about God's love for us. Working at home, working, sorry, <laughs> working at camp helped me grow in my faith and my relationship with God. I found working at camp very life-giving and I found a lot of value in the work that I did at camp even if it was difficult at times. I started attending Westgate in grade 10 and enjoyed it. It was definitely a large change from going to a school that was 10 minutes away and leaving all the people and friends that I knew. However, I really appreciated going to a school where people had similar beliefs and views that I did. I was challenged, but also encouraged. I enjoyed the weekly chapels, singing the camp songs that I knew, and hearing my teachers talk about their faith. I found it very nice going to a school that talked about faith and my classmates came from similar backgrounds as I did. During COVID, I grew in my faith even more and made my faith my own. I enjoyed reading the Bible, journaling, and praying. I realized that my faith and my relationship with Christ was very important to me, and this is one of the reasons I decided to get baptized. I also wanted to take the next step in my faith and further my relationship with God. I want to become a member of Sterling because my faith has grown so much through the pandemic. Thank you, Rebecca, for sharing your story. Now we're going to have, I, I don't know if it's Michelle or Conrad or both or one, both of you, uh, we're going to hear a response to your story and affirmation of you as a person. So we're going to invite both of you to come and to share, and Rebecca, you can just feel free to stay up there. Rebecca, it feels not that long ago when we held you in our arms during your child dedication service. We did so hoping for today, hoping for this day, your baptism. At your dedication service, we promised to bring you up in a Christian home. We promised to love you, to walk with you through life's ups and downs. We promised to teach you about God and demonstrate his love to you. We recognize then and now that there are others who have played important roles informing who you are today. And some of these people are here today. Rebecca, you've been a willing and active participant in Sunday morning worship, Sunday school, camp, BBS, MDS service trip, local, provincial, national, and even international youth events. We've seen your faith grow and mature over the years. We are very happy your decision to confess publicly your relationship with Jesus and your desire to continue following Jesus become a full member of the church. Very proud of you. Rebecca, we have seen your faith in God grow and develop. There have been significant moments in your faith journey that this church Sterling has seen a part of. Your faith grew and was challenged during your four years in Cross Lake Manitoba. It was during your time in this Indigenous community that you got to know God in an even deeper way. You got to worship a in a community that was a lot different than what you were used to. You were challenged during your time here. You saw injustices that bothered you. You saw and had to come to grips with it. It was hard, but you did it with the support of a Sterling community surrounding you. The Sterling community has stood by you as you matured as a person and in your faith. Your first year in Cross Lake, you wanted to help the Sterling team by connecting with the Cross Lake teenagers and be part of the Cross Lake leadership group that Sterling started. You knew there was a need to have Sterling volunteers change the roles midweek and help with leadership. So you took the initiative with that group and helped out with the leadership program. You became a leader there and your leadership skills and maturity shone through. Another significant part of your faith journey was your youth retreat in Saskatchewan. Sterling sent youth leaders and you were able to go on a youth retreat. Your faith grew as you worshiped with youth across Canada. 
Rebecca, your faith also grew when you worked and worshipped at camp for a couple of summers. You sang and worshipped with youth and kids. You were a youth you were a leader there and shared your faith with your peers and children around you. Rebecca, your faith was tested and challenged in the last year and a half as you were isolated from friends and extended family. You are a social, you are a social person and you were challenged in many ways, but you were resilient as you dealt with each challenge and moved on. You found it hard at times for online learning, but the pandemic did not stop you. Your faith was also challenged during this time. Some special moments I will always remember for eating breakfast with you during the pandemic. We would eat breakfast together as we listened to different devotions and songs that your teachers at Westgate sent for daily devotions. And we would worship together as we ate breakfast. That was a special time together. But you've also heard about the struggles of your teachers during that time. And you had a challenging year this last year as it was your grade 12 year. But even in a pandemic, that didn't stop you. I think in the last year, more than ever, you relied on God. I think God became more real to you as you realized that God is the rock and the storms of life. And God is our foundation. God gives us the strength God gives us the strength to keep going. And Rebecca, I want you to remember that God is like a rock. He gives us a firm foundation in times of stress and turmoil. I have seen you grasp this idea as you leaned on God in the last year and read your Bible and prayed and worshiped God with the songs you listened to. You turned to God. You were intentional about reading the Bible and listening to praise songs to help you and be with you. Your faith grew this last summer as you had a summer job at Sterling. You were challenged as you planned children's activities for the kids, and you learned more about the ins and outs of church work. You were challenged, but different people in the church saw your gifts with children and your creativity. Again, you turned to God, you prayed, and focused on Him. This is an exciting day. We are a church, we as a church look forward to seeing where God calls you next and how God will use your gifts. As God said at Jesus' baptism, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Today I say to you, Rebecca, this is my daughter whom I love, and her I am well pleased. Yea, God. Rebecca, I want to leave you with this verse. This is my favorite verse from Matthew 28, 20. And surely I am with you all. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Michelle and Conrad as well. Sterling Mennonite Fellowship and others who have joined us as well, we have a role today in this baptism. Not only are we witnessing what Rebecca is doing, but we are also welcoming Rebecca into our fellowship. And so we also are going to respond after the baptism with an affirmation, which, Andrew, I don't know if you can pull that up or not. In a second, we will pull that up. <laughs> Just so you can see what we're going to say, and then after we're going to say it together. Um, in a second here. Yeah, it, I mean, if you can read that, read through it. If not, that's okay. We will say it together. It's what we say at all our baptism to welcome somebody into the fellowship. Well, Rebecca, let's do it. <laughs> can I invite you to come and stand over here? Now, Rebecca has been given some questions that she uh, is going to respond to, some questions about her faith and her commitment to Christ. So, Rebecca stays. Stays. Stays with me. <laughs> Do you renounce the evil powers of this world and turn to Jesus as your Savior? Do you put your trust in his grace and love and promise to obey him as your Lord? Do you believe in God the Father, the maker of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life? Do you accept the word of God as guide and authority for your life? Are you willing to give and receive counsel in Sterling Mennonite Fellowship? Are you ready to participate in the mission of the church? The scripture reading that Rebecca has chosen for her baptism this morning comes from Proverbs 8, verses 32 to 35. 
Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me find life and receive favor from the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rebecca, I'm going to invite you to kneel. Kneel the hand. Wow. Rebecca. <laughs> On your confession of faith in Jesus Christ is my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You are dead to sin and alive in Christ. May God baptize you with the Holy Spirit from above. Amen. Keep your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, we want to say our affirmation of Rebecca as well. Andy, if you go to the next slide, it's a bit bigger font. There we go. Let's uh, rise. If you are able, join us in speaking this together. As siblings in the body of Christ, we welcome you, Rebecca, into Christ's church. We witness the work of the Holy Spirit who has led you to Jesus as Savior and God as the source for your life. We promise to encourage you in faith, to rejoice with you in joy, to support you in suffering, to guide you in confusion, to listen to the word God speaks in you, and to call out the gifts the Holy Spirit is creating in you. We thank God for your presence in the body of Christ, and we ask God's blessing on you all the days of your life. If it was not for COVID, we would invite any to come up and lay hands on Rebecca, but we're just going to invite the family bubble <laughs> to come and to lay hands on Rebecca, and Kennedy is going to pray a special prayer. And for those of you who are not coming forward, I invite you to uh, extend a hand as we pray for Rebecca. Please bow with me as we pray. Oh, creator God, we are so thankful for the young woman you have created in Rebecca. We are so thankful for her thoughtfulness, her joy, her silliness, her, her courage, and all the ways that you have created her to be such a strong woman of faith and of you. God, we thank you that she has made this decision today. What an exciting celebration that we as a church community get to be a part of. And, and to take joy in knowing that Rebecca has made this step this morning. And that that means that we also get to make the step of being devoted to Rebecca. God, I thank you for all the ways that you will use her here at Sterling and beyond in the greater church. I ask that as she steps into this, this new way of being, that you would just give her courage and peace and hope and, and all of your gifts and all of your wisdom. I pray that we would take seriously the, the affirmation that we just spoke to Rebecca, that we would listen as she challenges and encourages us, and in return, challenge and encourage her. God, what a good day that this is. We are so thankful that you have brought us all here this morning. And I pray that as as we go from this space, that we would be encouraged, 
reminding us of our own baptisms and of the baptism that we just witnessed here this morning. Amen. 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 As the family heads back to the seats, I invite you to have your seats and we're going to sing those last two verses from Take My Life and Let It Be. Let's sing that together as we close this time of baptism. Thank you, Kareem. Thanks, Sharon, and everyone else involved in our service. Let's sing this final song. It's a short one. It uh, speaks about the peace uh, and wishing one another peace. So let's sing together. Peace.